The following is an independently produced community access program. The viewpoints expressed are those of the community access producer and do not reflect those of Shaw Cable Systems. The program is presented in response to CRTC policy guidelines regulating community programming. Like any family, they cook meals, take care of chores, and help each other out. But this is not your traditional family. What we are is we're a day house for people that are living in poverty, that are trying to find a better way of life. We have two different programs here. We have a residential program and we have a drop-in program. Our drop-in program consists of, we're open six days a week. Uh, we serve lunches, we have laundry facilities and shower facilities, or we supply everything that people need. For those living on the streets, it's a safe place to drop in. In a year, about 4,000 meals are served and 1,200 showers and laundry take place in this home, located on a quiet corner in downtown Victoria. House Director Terry Edison Brown says it's more than just a place to drop in. One of the keys to Anawim is, is the whole family concept, supporting of each other. Um, having a place that they can actually call home, like a real home, a place that they feel safe in, a place that where they can go to and actually feel that they belong. For a handful of guests, Anwim becomes their full-time home. The facility has seven bedrooms where people start a new life. Terry Edison Brown, who is now the director of the house, came to Anwim 16 years ago. I was a, a drug addict that was very, very near living on the street. Um, I was living in a crack shack, per se, that my life was in danger to a certain extent and things just weren't looking good for me. He realized he had to change where he was or he had to die. I was told that the big blue house is a place that you can do your laundry and you can eat. Things changed for Edison Brown as soon as he walked through the door. I didn't feel that I was being, um, somebody was trying to label me or that somebody was trying to, um, to trust me for who I was. He spent six months dropping in to Anwim, doing awesome. dishes, eating meals, doing laundry. Then he went back to his self-described hell where he was living. The turning point for him was Christmas Day. Colleen, who was the coordinator at the time, uh, gave me a stocking and gave me a present with my name on it. This was my first time in a very, very long time that I felt that I had something, that somebody cared. This was a trigger for a new beginning. Soon after he moved into the house, his life changed dramatically. When I came here, that I learned how to live in a family atmosphere. I learned how to work with others. I learned how to trust others. I learned how to be with people in a way that was actually not just how's the weather. I was able to find out who I was and open up to others so that they could open up to me. John Ewer came to Anawim a few years ago from the streets of Toronto and then Victoria. I was consciously started using when I was around seven and by the time I was like 14, 15 I was a, I was a total alcoholic and then my drugs were getting heavier and heavier so I was on the streets quite early off and on and um, just progressed over the years in and out of jail and um, couldn't keep my family disown me and I, I you know I couldn't keep a relationship I couldn't keep a job like Terry he went to Anwim to do laundry and eat I tell people that um, you know when I was living on the streets it's like you see on TV the world is just going by a thousand miles an hour and you're just walking really slow it's like you miss everything like for me I was missing everything in life and it was just the loneliest place to be John says Anwim became a family to him, giving him unconditional love and direction. Like I was just learning how to live again, right? You know, I never got that in my family when I was younger. My family's all alcoholics and 
addicts themselves. So I never got that love or support by any means, so I didn't know anything about it, right? And when I got that here, it was like all foreign to me. As I was, it was scary, you know? And it, and it took a long time before I, it sunk in is that, you know, these people love me. He's now a father and has been working at a job for several years, but still returns to Anwim to give back. So you're moving in? Yeah, I'm not. Joe is just starting his journey. He'll move into Anwim shortly. He's been clean and sober for 30 days, which is a requirement. I'm learning to do things now clean and sober, which, you know, I've never really done simple things, you know, and, uh, and enjoying it, you know, and, you know, I always thought, you know, I didn't fit in or whatever, but, you know, I do, you know, and I just was living in, in, in denial, I guess you could say, and uh, I can see a future now, whereas before I, I couldn't, you know, my life was in a bottle and, and my life revolved around that, so I lived a pretty, you know, in a box kind of life, a dreadful life. His road has also been tough beyond what most could even imagine. I remember my first drink at eight years old, you know, I experimented with it and by 12 I was at least drinking on weekends and by 15 I would say that I was pretty much a full-pledged alcoholic because, you know, I was even working at that young age and I was losing jobs and accommodations and my life had become a mess basically before I even got started. Waking up in a back alley you know, homeless and wet from the rain and freezing and, and hungry and sick from alcohol. And just thinking, you know, that a dog lives better than I do. You know what I mean? And I just, you know, I told myself, why, why are you doing this to yourself? You know, you're literally killing yourself. Like, what is going on? You have to, you know, pull up your socks or you're going to die. Just starting his journey, Joe is full of hope and believes in Anwim, he says, because they believe in him. If I can do it, a lot of people can, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I just, it can be done. You know, I was at a point where I was hopeless. And it's like, no, you know, there's no hope for you, Joe. You know, you're just too far gone, blah, 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 blah. And I was believing all this nonsense in my head and... Uh, you know, it is a reality and people can change. Anwim celebrates its 20th anniversary this year. The house runs on public donations on a budget of only $160,000 per year. Needless to say, donations are crucial in running the house. Like the family home it is, it needs the same things to operate. Used clothing uh, for men and women. We need toiletries, being sh um, shampoos, toilet... Uh, Toothbrushes, toothpastes, underarm deodorants, razors, shaving creams. Uh, we also need socks, 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 <laughs> underwear, um, food. Um, people ask me what they can donate to Anna Women. I said, look at your own grocery list and times it by 25 and that's what we need. Terry says if you want to donate, just drop into the Big Blue House at 973 Caledonia. The proceeding was an independently produced community access program. The viewpoints expressed are those of the community access producer and do not reflect those of Shaw Cable Systems. The program is presented in response to CRTC policy guidelines regulating community programming.